Muqtada al-Sadr is an Iraqi Islamic political leader, along with Ali al-Sistani and Amr al-Hakim of the Islamic Supreme Council of Iraq. Sadr is one of the most influential religious and political figures in Iraq, despite not holding any official title in the Iraqi government. He is the leader of a political party, the Sadrist movement. Titles. He is often referred to as Sayyid Muqtada al-Sadr. The title Sayyid is generally used among Shia Muslims related to Muhammad through his daughter Fatima's marriage with Ali. Thus, a great deal of respect is paid by the Shiite Muslims to the Sayyids throughout society. Western media often refer to Muqtada al-Sadr as a firebrand or militant cleric, but his formal religious standing is comparatively low. At a mid-ranking Shia religious rank perhaps reflecting his youth, and he does not claim the title of Mujtahid or the authority to issue fatwas. In early 2008, however, al-Sadr was reported to be studying to be an ayatollah, which would greatly improve his religious standing. Family. Muqtada al-Sadr is the fourth son of a famous Iraqi Shia cleric, the late Grand Ayatollah Muhammad Muhammad Sadiq al-Sadr. He is also the son-in-law of Grand Ayatollah Muhammad Bakir al-Sadr. Muqtada al-Sadr is of Iraqi and Iranian ancestry. His great-grandfather is Ismail al-Sadr. Muhammad Sadiq al-Sadr, Muqtada al-Sadr's father, was a respected figure throughout the Shia Islamic world. He was murdered, along with two of his sons, allegedly by the government of Saddam Hussein. Muqtada's father-in-law was executed by the Iraqi authorities in 1980. Muqtada is a cousin of the disappeared Musa al-Sadr, the Iranian-Lebanese founder of the popular Amal movement. In 1994, al-Sadr married one of Muhammad Bakir al-Sadr's daughters. He has no children. Positions Muqtada al-Sadr gained popularity in Iraq following the toppling of the Saddam government by the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Al-Sadr has on occasion stated that he wishes to create an Islamic democracy. Al-Sadr commands strong support. After the fall of the Saddam government in 2003, Muqtada al-Sadr organized thousands of his supporters into a political movement which includes a military wing known as the Jaysh al-Mahdi or Mahdi Army. The name refers to the Mahdi, a long since disappeared imam who is believed by Shia Muslims to be due to reappear when the end of time approaches. This group has periodically engaged in violent conflict with the United States and other coalition forces. While the larger Sadrist movement has formed its own religious courts and organized social services, law enforcement, and prisons in areas under its control, his strongest support comes from the class of dispossessed Shia, like in the Sadr city area of Baghdad. Many Iraqi supporters see in him a symbol of resistance to foreign occupation. The Mahdi army operated death squads that frequently killed Sunni civilians particularly during the civil war phase of the Iraq war. In a statement received by AFP on 15 February 2014, Sadr announced the closure of all offices, centers and associations affiliated with al-Shahid al-Sadr inside and outside Iraq. He announced his non-intervention in all political affairs adding that no bloc will represent the movement inside or outside the government or parliament. War in Iraq 2003 Shortly after the U.S.-led coalition ousted Saddam and Hussein and his BAATH regime, al-Sadr voiced opposition to the coalition provisional authority. He subsequently stated that he had more legitimacy than the coalition-appointed Iraqi governing council. He granted his first major Western television interview to Bob Simon of 60 Minutes, in which al-Sadr famously said, Saddam was the little serpent, but America is the big serpent. In May 2003, al-Sadr issued a fatwa which became known as the al-Hurazim Fatwa. The fatwa allowed theft and racketeering on the condition that the perpetrators pay the requisite comes to Sadrist imams, saying that looters could hold on to what they had appropriated so long as they made a donation of one-fifth of its value to their local Sadrist.
office, the fatwa alienated many older members of his father's movement, as well as mainstream Shiites, and the Shia establishment and property-owning classes from the Sadrists. However, the fatwa strengthened his popularity among the poorest members of society, notably in Sada City. It has been claimed that the original fatwa was actually issued by al-Sad advisor Grand Ayatollah Qasim Hosseini Hari, and that al-Sada was simply loyally issuing the same instruction. 2004 In his 2004 sermons and public interviews, al-Sada repeatedly demanded an immediate withdrawal of all U.S.-led coalition forces, all foreign troops under United Nations control, and the establishment of a new central Iraqi government, not connected to the BAATH party or the Alawi government. In late March 2004, coalition authorities in Iraq shut down Saad's newspaper Al Hawza on charges of inciting violence. Saad's followers held demonstrations protesting the closure of the newspaper. On April 4, fighting broke out in Najaf, Saad city, and Basra. Saad's Mahdi army took over several points and attacked coalition soldiers, killing dozens of foreign soldiers and taking many casualties of their own in the process. At the same time, Sunni rebels in the cities of Baghdad, Simara, Ramadi, and, most notably, Fallujah, staged uprisings as well, causing the most serious challenge to coalition control of Iraq up to that time. During the first siege of Fallujah in late March and April 2004, Muqtada Sadrists sent aid convoys to the besieged Sunnis there. Paul Bremer, then the U.S. Administrator in Iraq, declared on 5 April 2004, that al-Sada was an outlaw and that uprisings by his followers would not be tolerated. That day al-Sada called for a jihad against coalition forces. His goal was to flex his muscles and establish himself an equal among the greybeards. To do this he needed to gain temporary control of Al-Qut and Najaf and the suburb of Baghdad named after his grandfather, Sada City. On the night of 8 April his Mahdi militia dropped eight overspans and bridges around the convoy support center Scania thus severing northbound traffic into Baghdad. The next day, Good Friday, his militia ambushed Henny and every convoy trying to get in or out of Baghdad International Airport, known to the soldiers as BIAP. This led to the worst convoy ambush of the war, the ambush of the 724th Transportation Company, which resulted in eight KBR drivers killed and three soldiers killed. One was Matt Maupin who was initially listed as the first American soldier missing in action. These series of attacks demonstrated an unexpected level of sophistication in planning. While the Mahdi militia knew they were no match for M1 Abrams tanks, they realized the soft underbelly of the tanks were the trucks they depended upon for everything they needed to fight with. BIAP was where the newly arrived 1st Cavalry Division drew its supplies. On Easter Sunday, April 11, the militia launched an attack on the southwest wall at BIAP behind which several hundred trucks parked. A small force of less than a dozen truck drivers led by 2LT James McCormick held off the enemy for nearly 45 minutes. 30 minutes after this fight, McCormick and his crew of the Humvee gun truck Zebra had to escort a convoy through a gauntlet of ambushes eight miles to the green zone. They divided the convoy into four serials and the militia ambushed the first one. McCormick then changed his tactics for the second convoy serial to turn into the enemy and return fire. This inflicted casualties into the militia and by the third convoy serial the enemy fire had slackened and the last convoy serial was not molested. He would refine this turn, fix and fire tactic when he helped form the 518th Combat Gun Truck Company. Desperate for fuel, tanks and strikers were pulled to escort fuel convoys north from Scania. By the end of April, the 1st Cavalry had broken the back of al-Sad's uprising but he had achieved his goal of becoming a significant force for the coalition forces to deal with. 2005 It is generally frowned upon in Iraq for clerics to actively participate in secular politics. 
Unlike the other leading religious figures Muqtada al-Sadr did not run in the 2005 Iraqi elections. It is believed he implicitly backed the national independent card as an elite party which was closely linked with the Mahdi army. Many of his supporters, however, backed the far more popular United Iraqi Alliance of al-Sistani. On 26 August 2005 an estimated 100,000 Iraqis marched in support of al-Sadr and his ideals. 2006 On 25 March 2006 Muqtada al-Sadr was in his home and escaped a mortar attack. This attack was disputed, as the ordnance landed more than 50 meters from his home. Saad's considerable leverage was apparent early in the week of 16 October 2006, when Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki ordered the release of one of Saad's senior aides. The aide had been arrested a day earlier by American troops on suspicion of participating in kidnappings and killings. 2007 On 13 February several sources in the U.S. government claimed that Muqtada al-Sadr had left Iraq and fled to Iran in anticipation of the coming security crackdown. U.S. military spokesman Maj. Gen. William B. Caldwell reinforced this account on February 14, but a member of Iraq's parliament and an aide to al-Sadr have denied the claims. On 30 March it was reported that Sadr, through clerics speaking on his behalf, delivered a searing speech, condemning the American presence in Iraq, and calling for an anti-occupation mass protest on April 9. This call to protest was significant in that since the beginning of the American troop surge, Sadr had ordered his militia to lie low during the new Baghdad security plan so as not to provoke a direct confrontation with the Americans. Muqtada al-Sadr urged the Iraqi army and police to stop cooperating with the United States and told his guerrilla fighters to concentrate on pushing American forces out of the country. According to a statement issued on 8 April 2007, the statement, stamped with al-Sadr's official seal, was distributed in the Shiite holy city of Najaf on Sunday 8 April 2007, a day before a large demonstration there called for by al-Sadr to mark the fourth anniversary of the fall of Baghdad. You, the Iraqi army and police forces, don't walk alongside the occupiers, because they are your arch enemy, the statement said. On 17 April 2007 several ministers loyal to al-Sadr left the Iraqi government. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki stated that the withdrawal of these ministers had not weakened his government and that he would name technocrats to replace them soon. On 25 April 2007 al-Sadr condemned the construction of Azimia Wall around a Sunni neighborhood in Baghdad, by calling for demonstrations against the plan as a sign of the evil will of American occupiers. On 25 May 2007 al-Sadr delivered a sermon to an estimated 6,000 followers in Kufa. Sadr reiterated his condemnation of the United States' occupation of Iraq and demanded the withdrawal of foreign forces. Al-Sad's speech also contained calls for unity between Sunni and Shia. In June 2007, Al-Sad vowed to go ahead with a planned march to the devastated Askaria shrine in central Iraq. Al-Sadr said the march was aimed at bringing Shi'is and Sunnis closer together and breaking down the barriers imposed by the Americans and Sunni religious extremists. In a statement issued 29 August 2007 Muqtada al-Sadr announced that an order to stand down for six months had been distributed to his loyalists. Following the deaths of more than 50 Shia Muslim pilgrims during fighting in Karbala the day before, the statement issued by Saad's office in Najaf said, I direct the Mahdi army to suspend all its activities for six months until it is restructured in a way that helps honor the principles for which it is formed. The intention behind the ceasefire was thought in part to be to allow al-Sadr reassert control over the movement. 
which is thought to have splintered. We call on all sadrists to observe self-restraint, to help security forces control the situation and arrest the perpetrators and sedition mongers, and urge them to end all forms of armament in the sacred city, said the statement, referring to the 28th of August clashes in Karbala, asked if the unexpected order meant no attacks on American troops, as well as a ban on Shia in fighting, a senior al Sada aide said. All kinds of armed actions are to be frozen, without exception. 2008 In March 2008 during the Battle of Basra, the Sada movement launched a nationwide civil disobedience campaign across Iraq to protest raids and detentions against the Mahdi army. In August 2008, Al-Sada ordered most of his militiamen to disarm but said he will maintain elite fighting units to resist the Americans if a timetable for the withdrawal of U.S. troops is not established. Weapons are to be exclusively in the hands of one group, the resistance group, while another group called Momahidown is to focus on social, religious and community work. Sadrist cleric Mudafal Musawi said, 2009 In response to Israeli attacks on Gaza, al sadr called for reprisals against U.S. troops in Iraq. I call upon the honest Iraqi resistance to carry out revenge operations against the great accomplice of the Zionist enemy. On 1 May 2009, al sadr paid a surprise visit to Ankara where, in his first public appearance for two years, he met with Turkish President Abdullah Gül and Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan for talks which focused on their political process and requested Turkey play a greater role in establishing stability in the Middle East. Spokesman Sheikh Salah al obaidi confirmed the nature of the talks that had been requested by al sadr and stated, Turkey is a good, old friend. Trusting that, we had no hesitation in traveling here. After the meeting al sadr visited supporters in Istanbul, where al obaidi says they may open a representative office. 2010 In a press conference on 6 March 2010 ahead of the Iraqi parliamentary election, 2010, Muqtadha al sadr called on all Iraqis to participate in the election and support those who seek to expel U.S. troops out of the country. al sadr warned that any interference by the United States will be unacceptable. al sadr who has thousands of staunch followers across Iraq has consistently opposed the presence of foreign forces and repeatedly called for an immediate end to the occupation of Iraq. 2011 On 5 January 2011 Muqtadha al-Sadr returned to the Iraqi city of Najaf in order to take a more proactive and visible role in the new Iraqi government. Three days later, thousands of Iraqis turned out in Najaf to hear his first speech since his return, in which he called the US, Israel, and the UK, common enemies, against Iraq. His speech was greeted by the crowd chanting, yes, yes for Muqtada, yes, yes for the leader, whilst waving Iraqi flags and al sads pictures. Subsequently, he returned to Iran to continue his studies. By late 2011, it appeared that the United States would largely withdraw from Iraq, a demand that helped make Sadr a popular leader amongst supporters almost immediately following the invasion. Sadr also controlled the largest bloc of parliament, and had reached a sort of détente with Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki, who needed Sadrist support to retain his post. Post-U.S. withdrawal Following the U.S. withdrawal from Iraq, al sadr continued to be an influential figure in Iraqi politics, associated with the al amar air bloc, whose Shia factions are still at war with not only the government but also the Sunni factions. However, whereas during the war al sadr was known for advocating violence, in 2012 he began to present himself as a proponent of moderation and tolerance and called for peace. In February 2014 al sadr announced that he was withdrawing from politics and dissolving the party structure to protect his family's reputation. However, later in 2014 he called for the formation of peace companies, often mistranslated peace brigades, to protect Shia shrines from the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant.
In June, these peace companies marched in Sada City, a slum in Baghdad infamous for being the prime Mahdi army center of operations during the Iraq War. In addition to guarding shrines, the peace companies participated in offensive operations such as the recapture of Jaf al Nasser in October 2014. They suspended their activities temporarily in February 2015, but were active in the Second Battle of Tikrit in March.